Welcome to the Science of Clock Change, a video series by Save Standard Time to explain how clock time affects our lives. This series was made possible with generous funding from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine Foundation. Hello, I'm Dr. Karen Johnson, a professor of neurology and a sleep medicine specialist. This video will discuss how misconceptions about daylight savings time might come from misinterpretation of research results. Most daylight savings time studies compare the weeks before and after clock change in the fall and spring. These studies teach us about the short-term effects caused by the sudden disruption to our schedules and our body rhythms. These short-term effects can be serious, like an increase in strokes or heart attacks, but they do not tell us whether permanent daylight saving time or permanent standard time is better in the long run. One example of short-term data being used to support permanent daylight saving time is the claim that permanent daylight saving time would lead to a 27% reduction in crime. While the study where this data came from found a brief drop in evening robbery rates for the first few days after the spring clock changed to daylight savings time, the drop did not last and crime rates were still higher than a few weeks earlier during standard time. These data support the idea that the spring clock change may lead to a short-term improvement in evening robberies for a few days, but not that permanent daylight savings time could reduce robberies by 27%. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine and other medical and scientific societies agree that while short-term studies support ending seasonal clock change, permanent daylight savings time would be even worse than our current policy. I asked Jennifer Martin, the president of American Academy of Sleep Medicine, why. Why does the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and other medical and scientific societies agree that while short-term studies support ending seasonal clock change, permanent daylight saving time would be even worse than our current policy? Our thinking on this has evolved over time um, based on, I think, greater availability of scientific evidence. Uh, I think that evidence is very compelling that during the change, um, during the change where people lose an hour of sleep um, and the because of circadian factors, that there are a number of short term effects that was very clear to us a long time ago. But as we as an organization, and I think other societies agree, have learned more about the consequences of permanent daylight savings time, we have evolved. And our position now is that both the seasonal time change should end and we should shift to permanent standard time. Thank you. You know, it's so great that you're really looking at the science and as we get new information, changing with it. Natural experiments are when we are able to compare the same or nearby locations on daylight savings time versus standard time. We can compare when permanent daylight saving time was tried in the United States in 1974 or in Russia from 2011 to 2014 to other periods. Other opportunities for data collection occurred when Indiana and Australia adjusted their clock times or by comparing Arizona and Hawaii, which are on permanent standard time to other states. However, few studies have compared the effects throughout all seasons of the year in the same location. Another way to study long-term effects is to compare locations with the same time zone that have different sunrise and sunset times. This can help us learn about daylight savings time because the sun time during standard time on the western edge is equivalent to daylight savings time on the eastern edge. We can compare the distance of a location from the middle of the time zone where sun is overhead at noon. Alternatively, we can also compare places that have a one hour difference in sun time, but the same phone or watch time. Additionally, some studies have compared locations that have the sun overhead between 11.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. to those with later sun times on the western edges of the time zone. Because daylight saving time delays or moves circadian times later, studying the effects of that delay can teach us about the impacts of daylight saving time. There is a large body of research looking into two groups with delayed rhythms, people with evening chronotypes and people with social jet lag. To better understand, we're gonna to talk to Eric Herzog, a professor of circadian biology at Washington University in St. Louis. Could you explain to us what chronotype and social jet lag are? Sure. So chronotype is your preferred wake up time. So when you're on vacation, when would you prefer to wake up? Uh, when uh, you look across ages, we notice that teenagers, for example, have a preferred wake up time that's later 
they're more evening type or owl type individuals than say older people. People who are older than 55 tend to be earlier chronotypes. They tend to be lines. When you think about your chronotype on work days versus free days, they can be different. So you may be waking up because of your social schedule earlier on work days. And the difference between your preferred wake up time on free days and when you wake up on working days, we call social jet lag measured in hours. So you can imagine that the more social jet lag you have, the worse you feel. So like teenagers who sleep in late on the weekends, they have more social jet lag? Teenagers have the worst social jet lag of everybody. The good news for teenagers is it's going to get better. Can you tell us why some people have more social jet lag than others? Yeah, one of the factors is actually genetics. We inherit our daily schedule in part from our parents. And so there are genes called clock genes that influence your preferred wake up time. When researching public health issues, it is important to look for disparities or groups of people that are more likely to be hurt by a policy. Adolescents and young adults are highly susceptible to delays in circadian rhythms, leading to more social jet lag. Permanent daylight saving time would have the largest impact on this age group. People with start times before 8.30 a.m. or long morning commutes would also be disproportionately affected. In this video, we discussed how studies evaluating the period around clock change only tell us about the short-term consequences of changing clock time. The long-term data support permanent standard time. These data come from studies of natural experiments, position within time zone, social jet lag, and evening chronotypes. Permanent daylight savings time is also more likely to negatively impact vulnerable populations. To learn more about how to harness the full power of the sun after watching this video series, visit savestandardtime.com. Advocate by texting XST to 50409 to tell your legislators to end clock change now with permanent standard time. Thank you.